Hey guys, this is Lisa. Welcome back to my channel. So today I just recorded with uh, my co-host Lindsay, the housewife historian. We recapped the new episode of Beverly Hills, which came out last night on Bravo. If you guys don't have Bravo and you guys have Peacock, is available to stream on Peacock the following day, which is today. And of course, we got into the whole Sutton Strat of it all. And I personally feel Sutton is getting such a bad edit that this is probably her last season. Uh, Lency, she said that she was 70 30 on it, 70 that Sutton is going, that this is her last season, and 30% that she is staying. And yeah, that episode is up. I did publish it. I wanted it to get it out right away. So I didn't really edit it too much. Let's get into the housewives. Okay, guys, before we get into the housewives, don't forget to hit the like, follow, subscribe, leave me a comment, all that good jazz. It's a great way to support my channel. It's a great free way to support my channel. So, I mean, and if you guys are coming over to the channel to view my episodes anyway, you might as well just, you know, hit the follow button. <laughs> Okay, so I wanted to get into a few things. Of course, we always end up with New Jersey because there's just so much going on with New Jersey. Um, now, back during the week of BravoCon, when all that crap was breaking out about Ramona Singer, about Marga Josephs, about the Gorgas and their comedy club scam and whatever else, there was also a lot of pump and huff and puff, I guess, about Louis. Um, of course, Louis Morales, uh, which is Teresa's husband, he won a legal victory in, uh, I call her Lifetime Movie Psycho X Vanessa, but Lifetime Movie Psycho X Vanessa, she had, um, she had a TRO against Louis, which is a temporary restraining order. And of course, it was finally decided the decision was finally made and the judge decided in Louis's favor so her lawyer uh his name is Doug Anton however he wants to spin it he tried to spin it as if this was like you know a legal victory for her too like I mean you know I mean what what else is he going to say right like what what else could he possibly say so I I totally understood like what he was trying to do um, and here, this is something that I always say, and I say this to Lindsay a lot when we talk privately, I say the best lawyers are the ones that follow the cardinal rule, the ones that tell their clients to follow the cardinal rule. And if you guys are wondering what the cardinal rule is, the cardinal rule is to shut the fuck up, it, which is something that a lot of people don't do. They feel they need to explain themselves. They feel they need to explain it to others. So a lot of people actually don't shut the fuck up. And that really hurt Vanessa. Now, people were wondering why that Halloween episode did not come out. And the gun was kind of jumped. It was on, it was supposed to be on their Namaste podcast. And, you know, Melissa, her co-host, um, Melissa Feaster, it's a Feaster or Feister? Feister. Um, her co-host, her co-host, Melissa Feister, she had put it on her Instagram and I don't know if she took it down, but she had put it up on her Instagram. And then of course, you know, people who are Teresa fans, Teresa stands, basically the tree hugger fan club, they had reposted that also. And it was basically like this, uh, photo, this kind of like a flyer photo that said, uh, you know, 1031, the truth comes out and was a picture of Louie and, and all this other stuff. So it, there, there was like a lot of hype being generated by uh, the Teresa fan club. They actually ended up shooting themselves in the foot because, yes, whatever is going on between Louie and Lifetime Movie Psycho X Vanessa, it, it is over, but... You know, I call her Lifetime Movie Psycho X Vanessa for a reason. So the drama itself is not over because there's still a lot of stuff going on with that. 
but um what happened is even before the tro louis had sued her for defamation and harassment and she countersued him they actually ended up settling it out of court when they settled it out of court there were court orders for the both of them neither one of them was to like say bad things about each other in public and then she was supposed to return his ring and a freaking exercise gym bike and like twenty thousand dollars and he was supposed to give her like freaking a computer or some shit i don't give a fucking know I, I don't and i don't feel like finding my tablet to go look this shit up but anyway so that was their first legal fight when uh, that was their first legal fight together after him and Teresa ended up being together so nothing else has happened since then she's kind of become irrelevant she didn't raise the big hoo-ha that she thought she was going to get and then of course this year though because she has hysteronic personality disorder she's like miss dsm5 or something over there she with her hysteronic personality disorder she needed attention so she went and she did this tro i kind of felt like louis really shot himself in the foot when he did that whole bodito thing because like now i kind of feel like anybody just blames him for everything right like world hunger is his fault um inflation is his fault like basically everything is his fault because he kind of gave them that he like he he kind of gave them that like perfect excuse like oh my god he's doing this look how creepy he is look look what he's doing and you know everybody and we see it at the reunion right everybody at the reunion basically used that against him marco joseph was like bodito call bodito dumb and bodito this and you know john fuda is sitting there like i know people i i know people i'm connected i know the number that you first of all he's he's talking complete bullshit and i'm going to get into that because i actually contacted britney but we're going to save that for another episode because i'm waiting for her to reply back to me um so i'll save that for another episode but um so that was complete bullshit because i definitely didn't use bodito <laughs> so <laughs> so for him to say that is complete bullshit because i mean she's arrested she's in the system her record's not expunged or sealed so obviously you could look up her sbi number you could look up where she is being incarcerated when her release date is what she got charged with so of course it's like complete bullshit um but again you know because he's you because he said that and he's and they made that episode into the finale it's like everybody has an excuse now to like basically paint him as this guy that they spent all season accusing him of and i also felt like marge trout mouth whatever i felt like margaret josephs and crazy freaking lifetime movie psycho x vanessa they probably got together it was like let's hit him with a double whammy this is going to make it so much more credible right my son got harassed john fuda's baby's mama is being dug up we're gonna hit him with like not even a double whammy like a triple whammy right like he was getting it from all size you know um with margaret joseph's son being called uh uh what's his face john F he's got like He's got like three different names. That's why I can't remember his fucking name. Um, John Fuda, you know, with John Fuda and his whole baby mama drama. And then with the Gorgas and the whole freaking pizza gate and all this other bullshit. And then, you know, here comes Lifetime Movie Psycho X Vanessa with her hysteronic personality disorder who she files a TRO. So look, what actually ended up happening and i'll go more into it on my podcast but I, what actually ended up happening kind of like dragged david yontif and kim d into it as well not a lot they legit had a falling out because of money they, that that is why they fell out they fell out because kim d felt like she wasn't compensated for what she should have been and you know that's that's really where the falling out is but it also has something to do with one of davis behind the velvet rope patreon episodes i go more into that but look people are wondering 
Look, he won the TRO. Why? What happened to this episode that they were building up, hyping up about? Melissa, I don't know if it was Teresa. I'm going to say it was Melissa. Melissa, Melissa Feaster. She kind of jumped the gun. She put that out onto her Instagram. Everybody copied, paste, repost, clipped it, downloaded, whatever. It is was put out there, and they were not prepared for that yet because, again, cardinal rule is shut the fuck up. And look, I'm going to say that James Lenner, which is Teresa's lawyer, I'm going to say that James Lenner is a better lawyer than Doug Anton is, okay? Like... Just to give you guys some background, James Leonard's dad was like a police chief or something for 20 years or 30 years. And James Leonard also successfully argued against a capital punishment case, a death row case. Those are very extremely hard cases to argue against. They're almost as hard as, um, as appeal cases. Because appeal, like the most difficult cases to argue are appeal cases because to successfully argue a appeal case, a panel of judges basically has to say that another judge made a mistake. That's the only way you win an appeal. The only way you win an appeal is by other judges, a group of judges acknowledging that a, a, a judge in a lower court made a mistake. So, you know argued a capital punishment case whereas doc anton i mean he he was sammy the bull garvano's attorney sammy the bull he got a sweetheart deal where he turned state evidence against john Gotti. john Gotti went to jail for the rest of his life basically he died in prison whereas you know i think um sammy Garmano got like what was it seven or 11 years and then he was put into the witness protection program and then you know of course when he was in Arizona he got into some hanky panky with ecstasy and uh, they have like a whole ecstasy drug ring going on and you know they haul his ass back to jail and this time there was no sweetheart deal because there was no bigger fish to fry the big boss the big man on campus was already in jail so this time he had he had to actually serve his prison sentence so i guess maybe karma caught up with him i i don't know like a lot of people felt like you know why should he get such a sweetheart deal when he acknowledges that he killed like 11 people so what like he he gets his skate free but you know he ended up spending i think what like 20 years in jail right i i'm not even sure um but anyway so he was his attorney, uh, and then he was also, um, Doug Anton was also one of the attorneys for R. Kelly, and look, R. Kelly went to trial, he lost his trial, he, com he got convicted, and he got sentenced for 30 years, so, and then, you know, he is Lifetime Movie Psycho X Vanessa's lawyer, and she basically had a court decision where her judge basically said that she is obsessed and this was nothing more than a publicity stunt to promote herself, her image, and her business. So, I mean, people were wondering, well, he won that TRO and he was supposed to come out with like, you know, the truth or his truth, you know, what happened to that episode? Look, when they got wind of this, and when when I say they, I really mean James Leonard. <laughs> when James Leonard got wind of this, he told them the cardinal rule that every lawyer, every good lawyer, I should say, that every good lawyer should always tell their clients, shut the fuck up. So when he got wind of what was to happen he was like listen guys shut the fuck up that is why that episode is not out now if you guys are wondering well that doesn't really make sense because he won the tro so why can't he before the tro before hysteronic personality disorder vanessa with her tro before that there was another court case it was a civil case she, uh, he sued her for harassment and defamation. She countersued, and and that was the 
that was that lawsuit where she was going on like her little freaking media press tour saying that like he louis would punish her if he didn't have like 50 times like if he didn't have sex 50 times a day or some ridiculous bullshit like that that was that lawsuit they settled that out of court but even though they settled that out of court there was still court orders in place that neither one of them are allowed to talk badly about each other obviously Vanessa she has not been following court orders that was one thing that really hurt her in this TRO and her judge acknowledges well not just her judge but the judge that was hearing the tro she acknowledges that vanessa actually like in her opinion when she wrote out the opinion for her decision she actually acknowledges the fact that vanessa has not been following court orders that was already in place about speaking poorly about one another and whatever and louis doesn't really talk about her at all doesn't even acknowledge her she is the one that is like really hung up so she wasn't following court orders and that really hurt her and you know but again if you guys are still wondering like okay but you know i mean obviously nothing really yeah she's not following court orders but it hasn't really hurt her except making her feel kind of stupid in this tro case why can't louis cut like why can't he come out with it he can't come out with it because she is the type that would, even though she's out there on podcasts is saying he's a narcissist, he's a narcissist, he's a narcissist. She is, she is such, she herself is such a narcissist that as soon as Louis drops this episode or as soon as this episode would have been published or posted she would have ran to the courthouse and filed like some contempt of court order saying that he like was willfully willfully intentionally disregarding court orders that were already in place and that she wants to sue him for contempt of court for breaching court orders and blah 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 this is what happens when somebody is a narcissist she herself is a narcissist you have a narcissistic woman who is trying to label somebody else as a narcissist if you guys are following me but something else is that this never ending train wreck that is vanessa the histrionic personality disorder that is vanessa crazy ass vanessa um the legal drama is actually not ended with her and i don't know if duck is like doing this pro bono because i can't imagine that like he unless he's giving her some sort of family discount i don't know but anyway there is a woman named Elaine Boxer. This woman, Elaine Boxer, is who Lifetime Movie Psycho X Vanessa is claiming was an employee of Bodito's. And this is how, you know, this TRO came about. She is stating that my baby just woke up. <laughs> You're going to hear her in the background, but I'm going to continue anyway because I do not feel like re-recording. I already recorded like about almost 27 minutes. Uh, she's on my bed. I'm sitting on the floor. She's on my bed. But um, anyway, so like I was saying. Okay, guys, so I'm going to wrap this up really quickly because I managed to put my baby back to sleep. And again, guys, I'm going to have more information on this on my podcast, NYC Gal Out. Of course, as you guys know, all of my username handles on my podcast, on all of my social media platforms are NYC Gal Out. Um, and I do my podcast recording like really late at night when my baby's asleep so that's why like people always tell me how come like some of your audio sounds better than others and i'm like because it's late at night when everybody's asleep <laughs> except for mom mom anyway um so yeah let me wrap this up by saying that this actually all has to do with a woman named elaine boxer elaine boxer of course according to histrionic personality disorder vanessa she claims that this woman um some woman was like some weird ass name 
Alana Nickelbacher. I, mean, I, I don't know if that's actually the name. I don't have my tablet in front of me. I don't feel like going to get it. Um, I want to wrap this up. But she's claiming some woman came and was like really a decoy or not even a decoy, like just a plant to like try to get information. She's fucking crazy. Um, I don't believe that story at all. I absolutely believe that she 100% made it up because she's just fucking crazy like that. But um, according to her anyway, you know, she paid, uh, this woman paid with a prepaid credit card. And then when she went to go charge for services, somebody should look into this Lifetime movie psycho X Vanessa's billing charges. I mean, like, I personally would not recommend her. She's saying she's an expert in narcissism, but she claims that every single relationship she's ever been with was an abusive relationship. So I'm not sure what kind of expert she is, unless she wants to be an expert of don't be like don't be like me, don't be, you know, don't become lifetime movie psycho X Vanessa. Because it's like you're this expert who really isn't an expert like if we are to believe your bullshit then you really are an expert at anything other than being duped right like i mean that's according to your narrative anyway but anyway so that's the story that she's going out with and she is stating that she got a hold of doug anton doug anton and his investigative team or whatever was able to track this woman down find out that her name is elaine a boxer and that at the at the point in february of this year that she was an employee of boditos that they have documented proof that she was an employee of boditos so even though lifetime movie psycho x vanessa her TRO with Louie is over, is done with, whatever. She got like freaking egg in her face when the judge basically called her obsessed, said she was doing it for nothing more than a publicity stunt. And she, so that is over. But the legal drama that is the train wreck of Vanessa is that they have an upcoming, not day, not day as in Louis and Vanessa, but Vanessa has this upcoming trial for this collection that she is pursuing these services for. I mean, I don't know fucking how much she's charging this lady, but whatever. I mean, if you are to believe her, then you are also to believe that Bodito, this guy who claims that, you know, he's some sort of international freaking Sherlock Holmes, Inspector Gadget, whatever, that this guy doesn't know his ass from his elbow because he's sending somebody out there with a prepaid credit card that could get traced back to him. So, I mean, I'm not sure if you want to, I mean, if you, if you are to believe that this guy is some sort of international Sherlock Holmes, then this kind of seems like really amateur hour to be able to get caught like that. But that's the narrative that histrionic personality disorder Vanessa is going with. So they have this upcoming court case, breaking news. I don't care where you hear it else, where you hear it else. I don't care where else you hear it. You heard it here first, because there's one thing that I always say, the upload date does not lie which is why i like to post certain things onto youtube because then i could just screenshot that shit and be like look this is the upload date so whether you hear it on another podcast or somewhere else you heard it here first they have an upcoming court date vanessa and this elaine boxer woman they have an upcoming court date where she's trying to get whatever money she thinks is owed to her, due to her, whatever. And in that court case, the judge has ruled that there is probable cause, ca the judge has ruled that there is probable cause to go to trial or to go to a hearing for it. So that case has moved forward and Doug Anton, her lawyer is requesting to dispose um, Bodito, and to have him testify, to have him, you know, be a witness. And 
you, you, know, you know, like calling somebody as a witness doesn't necessarily mean that they are working for either team because either side, both sides, both sides can call witnesses that they feel will be supportive to winning their case, whether that whether that witness is agreeable or not, you know, to whatever. So that is also another reason besides from, you know, the cardinal rule of shut the fuck up. That is also another reason why, you know, Louis is not the narcissist that Vanessa is trying to paint him out to be. Because here's the thing, narcissists, they can't control themselves. They have to have that, they have to have that admiration from the public, even from people that they don't know, which is why, you know, Louis, he doesn't care if, if you know, he, he put it his team, his people, his whatever, they put it out there that we're going to come out with this episode and then they're not dropping this episode and he doesn't care about the conspiracy theories and he doesn't care that this makes him look bad. Whereas Vanessa though, you know, she would never be able to like just be quiet and go away, lay down low, put her head down low. She wouldn't be able to do that because she is a narcissist. They do have this upcoming court case with Vanessa, this woman, Elaine Boxer, and the judge in that case has ruled that there is probable cause to continue with like discovery or whatever. They have not went to trial yet, but the judge has ruled that there is enough supportive evidence to move to the next next phase. I think that's also kind of why, um, you you know, Louis hasn't like dropped his episode or even if they already recorded an episode i also think that is another reason why the episode itself has not been published or posted because um be, you know because one of the witnesses uh, for that case is going to be bodito so I feel like, you know, Bodito is his friend and of course he would never do anything to jeopardize Bodito or his career or anything. So it might not even be like, you know, Louis' lawyer telling him that adult. I got to say though, I mean, like I said, if you're a good lawyer, that is like the number one thing you tell your clients to like, just shut the fuck up, you know, celebrate your victory, but you don't need to put it out in public. We'll put, like, you know, we, we did our press tour by basically embarrassing her with this. And, you know, we already got the headlines. There's no need to gloat about it because whatever, we celebrate in private, not public, right? And so that is how I know that Louis is not the narcissist that narcissistic Vanessa is claiming that he is because narcissistic Vanessa, she can't control herself. She can't celebrate any victory that she has. She cannot celebrate it in private. It has to be in public so that everybody knows. I mean, when she served him with this TRO, she was like freaking calling up everybody and we're going to get into that on the podcast, I told you guys that it had a little bit to do with David Yontif and one of his Behind the Velvet Rope episode. It also had to do with Kim D. Um, but, you know, that that wasn't what their falling out was, but it, it did kind of, you know, add on to the multi-layers that was the breakup of their BFF friendship. But, um, okay, guys, I am going to wrap up with just saying that that is what it is that you know, it, it's not some conspiracy theory that's floating. Out. There's so much shit floating out there about why that episode didn't come out. I'm telling you that episode didn't come out because you celebrate in private, not in public. You don't need to gloat. So he's following the cardinal rule of shut the fuck up. And also because Hysteronic personality disorder Vanessa does have a ongoing case with Elaine Boxer for basically, I guess the charge would be death of services. Basically, she's saying that, you know, this lady skipped out on an and on, on, on an IHOP bill or like, you know, you go out to eat at Applebee's and you try to skip out on your meal. That's like death of services. That's death of goods received, you know, that's basically like what Joe Gorga is getting sued for from this concrete company. So this is the same thing that um, 
she is basically getting sued for something similar for what would be like considered deaf of services. It's um it's a little bit tricky. I don't know all the deeks, but I do know there is this ongoing court case and that Bodito is being called as a witness. He is being disposed. And that is why, you know, on top of the cardinal rule of shut the fuck up, that is also why that that, you know, hyped up episode of Louie being able to finally address the bodito of it all, I guess, is because, you know, I'm sure he doesn't want to jeopardize and anything that would impact bodito negatively with his Tyronic personality, Vanessa. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining me. And don't forget to hit like, follow, subscribe, leave me a comment and all that good jazz. Head on over to the podcast when you get time time to check it out. Because um, I know sometimes it's easier to listen to the podcast than it is to see the visuals. But then I know sometimes some people like to see the visuals because they want to see like what the hell I actually look like. And God forbid if I'm accused of being AI. So bye, guys.